Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm going to show you how to install a doohickey, yes, that's really what it's called, and a torsion spring from Eagle Manufacturing on your KLR650. So what is a doohickey? A doohickey adjusts the chain tension on your counterbalancer. Now, there are a lot of people out there that say you don't really need to do this upgrade, especially on the Gen 2 bikes but I've done enough replacements on these that that simply isn't true. Even on bikes that have as little as a thousand miles, we've seen problems with these. So this piece right here is the doohickey from Eagle Manufacturing. This piece right here is from Kawasaki. This is a Gen 2 lever. And the difference between this and a Gen 1 is the Gen 1 was a two-piece design that was had a weld right here. It was really thin and that weld would break. Now. The thing that the Gen 1 and Gen 2 do have in common are these springs. They'll either lose tension over time or they'll eventually break. Now, if any of these failures happen, your counterbalancer will get out of time and any of the broken parts can eventually lead to a catastrophic engine failure. So the doohickey does come with these upgraded heavy duty springs, but we opted to go with the torsion spring. It comes with this drill bit too. And the reason we're using this is that it puts direct tension on the doohickey and eliminates any slop in adjustment. And we'll show you more about that when we're actually doing the process. Now the Eagle Manufacturing torsion spring only works with the Eagle Manufacturing doohickey. It won't work with the stock adjuster. So if you do have a KLR, the doohickey and torsion spring are a must have upgrade and we'll show you how to get those put on. To do this job, we have our Tusk oil change kit. This kit comes with your choice of oil, a crush washer and oil filter. We're also going to install the Tusk low profile drain plug because these bikes do have a tendency to have issues with the drain plugs hitting stuff just because they hang down pretty far. So this will eliminate that problem. We have the doohickey kit. This comes with two different springs. This piece right here, we also have the torsion spring. And of course, your two left side engine cover gaskets. You need some common hand tools, a gasket scraper, rotor holder, flywheel puller, we've got some safety wire and a sharpie. You'll also need some rag safety glasses, a drain pan. We have our drill since we're installing the torsion spring. And if you don't have any of these specialty tools or parts, you can find them on our website by clicking the link down in the description below. Next, we'll remove the skid plate. Now the removal will be a little bit different on the Gen 1 models, but it's the same idea. Now I do want to point out if you don't want to change your oil, at the same time, you can lean the bike over to the right side and do this process. But if you're gonna do the process with the bike on the stand, you will need to drain the oil out. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll clean the ceiling surface. And when we reinstall the drain plug, we're actually using a Tusk low profile drain plug with a new crush washer. And for Gen 1 bikes, you're gonna to torque this to 17 foot pounds. Gen 2 is gonna be 21 foot pounds. We went ahead, threw our bike up on the stand. Now we need to remove the shift lever. To do that, there actually are a couple of punch marks that show our alignment on it, but if you can't see them very good, you can take your Sharpie and just make a line where that split is in the back. Now I'll loosen the bolt and remove it and remove the shift lever. Next, we'll remove the sprocket cover. Now we can disconnect this neutral sensor wire. So we'll pull that off and then we'll just kind of feed these wires from our stator. We'll pull those out of the way. Now we can remove the stator cover bolts. So now we're gonna remove this stator cover, but before we do that, I cut a piece of wire and this was that wire we had in the tool shot. And I'm just gonna run it up here by the frame. And this is gonna hang our stator cover because we're not gonna undo the wire clear up top. And when you pull this off, it is magnetized. So just be kind of careful with it and take your time. So to hang this up, I'm just gonna rest this cover on our foot peg. And then I'll take our wire and we'll just twist it up a couple times just so this thing isn't gonna go anywhere. And now we have access 
to this rotor right here. Now a couple things I want to point out is that we have our dowel pins in our stator cover and you want to make sure yours are there too. You don't want to lose those. Now we'll go ahead and we'll pull this gasket off. We'll try to pull it off in one piece so we have to do as little cleaning as possible. Now we have these gears for the starter. So I'm going to take these out together but when you do this you've got several loose pieces here. You've got some washers on the ends. These washers can stick to that cover so you want to watch out for those and then on this back side you've got washers on both sides and then this pin actually slides. Now we're ready to remove the rotor cover bolt. This is going to be really tight. The spec from factory on this bike is 144 foot pounds. So to help us out I'm actually going to take this breaker bar and I'm going to stick it through that frame mount right there. We'll take our rotor, rotor holder and I'm going to let this rotor holder sit against this breaker bar to help me hold this from moving while I break the nut loose. After that, I'm going to take a little bit of oil and I'll apply it to the threads on this rotor bolt. I'm going to screw this into place and then we'll use the rotor holder again. And this is going to pull the rotor off. And when this finally frees up, it's going to pop. So this one actually wasn't on there that tight. Sometimes they will pop. This one actually didn't but that's all right, it's coming off. So on this, you wanna keep track of the Woodruff key right here. So we're gonna remove that. Then we'll remove this washer and the bigger gear. All right, the next thing we'll do is pull these two washers off. These are the thicker washers. We'll set all this stuff in order. And then what we need to do this stock tensioner arm, we're going to remove this bolt from it. Keep in mind, the second generation are, should have a washer behind this right here, but if it's the older style, it might not have a washer. So keep track of that and don't drop it down into the bottom. If you do, you can use a magnet to get it out. Now we'll remove this stock adjusting arm. After that, we've got this inner cover that we need to remove. So we'll remove all the outer bolts. You do have a bolt right here. This one's gonna be a little bit shorter. And then also the shaft, you wanna make sure it doesn't come out with the cover. You wanna put a finger on that while you're pulling the cover off. So I'm gonna get this one out of our way very first. And then again, on this one, you'll wanna locate the dowel pins. Make sure you don't lose them. We'll go ahead and remove this gasket. With the cover off, we can now remove the spring for our tensioner. This one luckily hasn't broken yet, but again, we're trying to prevent any future damage from happening. So next, I wanna clean up all this gasket material from the engine case. So to do that, I'm gonna remove this dowel pin down here. And then I'm gonna cover up all these engine components so I don't get any material on them. So I'm just gonna stuff a rag over them. And I've got this Tusk gasket scraper. Just scrape this material away and be careful not to damage the aluminum surface. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other covers. These two smaller springs, these are the ones that come with the doohickey. So let me get that out of our way, the stock one. Now Eagle Manufacturing recommends installing this longer spring first or checking it first for the right fitment and there's no exact number for this, but you want about eight to 10 millimeters of stretch before it hooks onto this post right here. 
So if you're not running the torsion style setup, then this is probably the spring we'd be running. But if this was really close to that tab right there, we can go with the even shorter spring. But since we are using the torsion spring, we won't be reusing any of these springs right here. This is just gonna act as a spacer now. So we'll go ahead and show you how to get that torsion spring installed onto the case. Like we mentioned earlier, we are going to use the torsion spring on this. So to do that, we're actually gonna to have to drill a hole in this inner case cover. So we'll center this torsion spring up. There's a tab right here on the bottom. We need to put that between five and 530. So we'll center the round part on this hole right here and then mark where it needs to go. And I'm gonna take a centering punch Double check, I'm in the right spot. Then I'll take the drill bit that came with our kit. Now that we have the hole drilled, we'll spray a little bit of contact cleaner on there and clean these metal shavings off. So now we'll take the tab on our torsion spring and we'll line this up with our hole, press it down into place. All right, now that we have our torsion spring installed on the inner case cover, we're ready to put it on, but I do want to mention if your stock spring broke right here, you want to check the timing for your balancer and you can just reference your service manual for that. So we'll go ahead and put our dowel pins in place and install our new gasket. And before I slide this cover into place, I want to put a little bit of grease on the starter motor O-ring right here, help it slide into place a little easier. Next, we'll install all of the bolts and we'll tighten these bolts down to 78 inch pounds in a crisscross pattern. Next, I'll put the doohickey into place. Next, we'll install this adjusting bolt. If your machine didn't have the washer, you'll put the one that came in the kit. If it did have the washer, then you'll just reuse the one you had. And what we'll do, we're going to Push the doohickey all the way towards the front of the engine as tight as we can, just with our finger right there. We'll tighten it down. Now we'll hook the end of the torsion spring onto the end of the doohickey. So I'm just going to loosen this adjuster bolt a half or one turn and we're going to tighten that down when we put the last cover on. After that what we can do, making sure we have a little bit of oil on these fresh parts, we'll install these two big washers and we'll take our starter gear, put a little bit of oil on this bushing. We'll slide this into place and then we'll take our washer put this thin washer into place. And now we can take our Woodruff key and put it into place. Now, as you saw before, this Woodruff key would come out of here pretty easily. So we're just putting a punch mark in the side to hold the Woodruff key in tighter. And if it doesn't go in really easy, right away you can tap on the top to get it the rest of the way down in. Now keep in mind, it is important to have oil on this one-way clutch right here and the starter gear. But we also need to make sure there's no oil on the taper on either the rotor or on the end of the crankshaft. So to clean the tapers, I'll use a clean drag and some contact cleaner. All right, now to install this rotor, we'll align this groove with the Woodruff key and we're gonna turn the starter gear clockwise and this should help everything slide into place. All right, now we can use our new rotor bolt and we'll put that into place. We're gonna do several different steps while we install this. 
We're first going to torque this to 15 foot pounds. We'll take it out, clean everything off, and then we're going to torque it to 85. Make sure this starter gear rotates freely. That ensures that we don't have any issues. And if it does, we'll go ahead and do the final torquing of 144 foot pounds. We had some oil on our bolt when we pulled it out and we'll clean it off with some contact cleaner. At this point, we'll do the same trick with our pry bar. All right, we're at 85 foot pounds right there. If it doesn't turn freely, you wanna take your rotor back off and inspect for the reason this is binding up. Now that everything checks out okay, we'll go ahead and do the final torquing on this bolt. All right, we're gonna make sure all these parts are lubricated when we go back together with them. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease on the ends of these shafts, on the washers and needle bearings. Next, we'll reinstall the dowel pins and our new gasket. I am gonna take a little bit of gasket sealer and just right where this rubber gasket seals on these corners, I'm gonna apply just a little bit right there. We'll put the stator cover into place. Now keep in mind, it, it, it will be sucked in because it's magnetized and then also you're gonna have to line up these two dowels right here on top. Now we'll install the bolts in a crisscross pattern to 78 inch pounds. Now we can reinstall the neutral indicator connection and we'll route these wires back in their slots. Next we'll reinstall the chain guard and tighten down the bolts. Next we'll take our shift lever and line it up with the mark we made earlier. Next we'll reinstall the skid plate. Now we'll remove this rubber plug and we're gonna to torque the adjuster bolt to 78 inch pounds. Then we'll reinstall the rubber plug. Now we'll remove our oil fill cap and fill the bike with the recommended oil. And that's all there is to installing the Eagle Manufacturing Doohickey and Torsion Spring Upgrade Kit. These parts are really easy to put on, and if you need them, they're available on our website, along with just about anything you could want for your bike, including OEM and aftermarket parts. So be sure to check that out, and if you like this video and wanna see more like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a ton of other helpful videos on there. Thanks for watching.